Hey, this is Matt Woodmer from Red Precision. In this video, we are continuing to take a look at PXs in Niagara. And specifically, this time, we're going to take a look, a broad look at the design of user interfaces and all the features that are available to us from within Niagara and the PX editor that we can use to um, highlight specific pieces of data, uh, make things stand out, make things show up in a small amount of screen real estate, but um, show you the information that maybe you want to see. A uh, whole bunch of options available to us in Niagara. Uh, so let's jump in now and uh, we'll get started. All right, so the first thing that we're going to want to do when we're designing our PX um, is to consider what we're designing this PX for. So in this case, I'm looking at sort of an older revision of our demo uh, station here. And uh, this was a demo station. Intent was to show off features and things, but your intent may be uh, you know that your users are going to be specifically using your PXs on iPads, or maybe you need to be able to show them on a large television. All of that is going to determine exactly how you design and lay out the graphics and the information that you're going to want to show on uh, the PXs themselves. So if we look at uh, this PX in particular, um, this is using what's called a responsive uh, design, responsive panes that are available to us uh, in Niagara. And what that means is that as I drag my window around here, doo -doo -doo -doo, come on, as I drag this around and as my window size gets smaller, you'll see that the page reformats itself because if I was using a phone, um, obviously I want to be able to see all of my data in a way where I can easily read it at that smaller screen size, but then I also still want to be able to use it when I'm at, you know, a full size page. Uh, so that is a feature that's available to us. We haven't really touched on it so much, um, here on our YouTube channel, but if there's interest, that's something that we can take a, uh, more broader look at. Uh, the next thing to consider when you're designing your PXs is just general uh, UI graphic design hierarchy um, thinking that's been around for a very long time in graphic design. And uh, people do this without thinking. They read a page based on a whole bunch of different features, um, such as the size of the font, the color, the weight of the font, um, icons, colors, all of those things help direct your eye around a page. Obviously, the most important pieces of data should be the larger things on the page. And then you go as you go down, the information gets less and less important. Um, so in this case, we've got our AHU uh, pieces of data or our larger bits on the page. And um, that's where we're drawn to immediately first and then our link to those air handlers is a slight bit smaller and a lower weight on the font itself so as i mentioned like we have a ton of options available to us in our bound labels for the properties on them so we can change these fonts up to be something else if we wanted to i wouldn't recommend going crazy i would stick with um something like Arial, just because it's uh, well-known. You know what you're going to get across the board from people, and it's not an overly um, intrusive or opinionated font design. Uh, so it works well in pretty much any context. So we have the ability to do bold, different font sizes. All of that helps you direct uh, people in um, when they're using your interface uh, so that they're getting the information that they really need to see. Uh, as we can see with these guys, I'm animating, um, excuse me, I am, uh, I've got their text bold and at 20 point here so that it's a little bit easier to read and it stands out a little bit more. It's more important. Uh, as we go down, we then get into our zones. Uh, the zone name is the most important of those bits of information along with the zone temperature. So they're the bigger heavier weight bolded fonts for each individual zone and then who that zone serves and what the set point is is a little bit smaller um, you can drill down to that with your eyes after you look at the initial bolded uh, text and larger text the other thing that's um, worth noting that's a possibility for you here is that um, 
we have this color uh, block on the far left side. You don't need to write out occupied or unoccupied if uh, spaces um, to show a space's occupancy status. You could use a simple um, trick like this where all it is is a rectangle that's animated uh, its background color based on the status of our occupancy point. So green means that we're, uh, we're occupied. And then you can see down here on this one, the gray means that it's unoccupied. Super simple, easy ways to highlight um, pieces of information. And it's pretty intuitive to know if it's green, uh, there's, it's occupied and that zone is good or going. And uh, if it's gray, then we're, you know, we're not doing anything with it, it's unoccupied. And then another thing worth highlighting here is icons. Uh, instead of having to uh, write out, you know, this is my fan status, uh, this is what the heat's doing, this is what our cooling's doing, uh, we can use icons very easily for those three uh, pieces in particular, um, especially the heating and the cooling, to signify what those things are. We take up less space on the screen, uh, your eye is drawn to it a little bit more, and it still gets the point across uh, the same way that the text would. And in fact, it might even get it uh, across a little bit quicker than uh, if it was text because we're not actually reading it. We're just recognizing that symbol and it gets the point across. And then we get into the um, the meat of this page, which is the actual floor plan itself. Um, obviously, a, a large image like this is going to draw you to it no matter uh, what's on the image. And then we've got multiple different colors here, different signifying different zones and things. Uh, again, that's uh, drawing your eye in. And then little tiny details help um, the user navigate around this floor plan, like matching our uh, indication for the zone that's on the floor plan image itself with the label. We keep that color showing both places so that you can very easily find the information that you're looking for based on the color of the zone itself. Um, we have a ton of options to us available here in Niagara, and um, we just sort of scratched the surface. This is a really, really broad general uh, overview of the kinds of things that you should think about when you're designing a PX. I know a lot of the times uh, people are in a rush to build these things out. Um, you've only got so many hours on a project that you can work on stuff, but if you just spend a little bit more time thinking about things um, at the beginning and building th the, your PXs out in such a way that they're easy to use and understand, um, it makes it a whole lot more usable for your users and then a whole lot more usable for you as the technician going in there to um, fix and adjust and uh, tweak things on the site as issues may arise. So hopefully that was helpful and informative for you. Um, thanks as always for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to check out more uh, videos here on our PX series of things on uh, YouTube, uh, we've got the link to that playlist up here in the corner. And uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, leave a comment down below if there's anything in particular that you'd like to see more of. And uh, as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.